the wonderful world of couplet monitors. If you've got a phased array unit that can run multiple groups, why not run couplet monitors? And if you have an OmniScan X3, there's no reason not to. On an OmniScan X3, there's a button to make a coupling check. Completely conspicuous, it's located right here in the law config dropdown. When you press it, it will make a linear zero degree focal law using the first eight elements and you can use it to monitor the coupling efficiency while you're scanning. The coupling check will appear as a simple C-scan amplitude strip. If you put your gate around the first back wall echo, you'll see it appear either above or below your main C-scan. Just make sure that you set your range to at least two back wall echoes. That way, if you ever wanted to post-process, you can go back and actually verify the part thickness. The codes almost never require you to do a coupling check. I can count on 10 fingers the number of times I've done this in the field. But what happened here? A beautiful white weld, or loss of coupling. Because we didn't run a coupling check, we're never gonna know. Using the photoelastic camera, watch the coupling monitor come out, bounce off the bottom, and come straight back up again. Now notice it's coming out of the back of the wedge. Food for thought, that makes sense because the transducer is located on the back end of the wedge. Now we'll try it out. I'll take this probe and put it down on the three quarter inch step of an ERVT block. I've already run a TCG calibration. If everything is all slopped up nicely with coupling, we get good strong signals from the half T hole all through three legs. But if I dry up the surface to disrupt the coupling and try it again, you'll see the coupling channel display turns gray. The default palette for a coupling check is set to turn gray at 40% screen height. So as the coupling gets worse and worse, you can see the amplitude of the side drilled holes drop off. Couplet monitors are simple enough when you're doing flat stuff or maybe girth welds on piping, but if you're scanning circumferentially, it's like a whole new language. Now I realize here that we're dealing with the thinnest of margins. If you're scanning a like a four inch pipe in the COD direction, probably mark that on your calendar because you're not gonna do that every day. Maybe you're inspecting things like long seam welds and you're using a COD wedge. That wedge curvature will actually refract the standard coupling check backwards. So depending on the curvature, this may spell a less than glamorous death for your beam. Just take a look at the photoelastic camera, see all the mode conversions and off angle reflections. Yuck. To get the coupling check to work properly on a COD inspection, you actually have to steer the beam slightly forwards. And how much will depend on the wedge curvature. Now to find the right angle, first replace the coupling check group with a sectorial L-wave sweep with a range of zero to some upper angle, and then you use this to identify the peak angle. Then you make your own coupling check by replacing the sectorial with a linear group at that magic angle. And make sure you use exactly the right number of elements. If it was eight elements for the sectorial, just use eight elements for the linear. Don't let it raster all the way up to the end of the probe. What you want at the end is just that single strip of amplitude values in the C-scan. Running a coupling check while scanning provides really valuable data and on an X3, it's really easy. When we're scanning, we're trying to keep an eye on everything and it can be really easy to miss when we lose coupling. When we're doing amplitude-based inspections or playing the game of how loud is that sound, low amplitude data is not great data. So run a coupling check and take the guesswork out. It's one thing to have a chuckle if you're right there, do things a few times and get it to work right. But it's hard to laugh if you find out later on the data is soft, and then you've gotta go back and re-spin the whole weld. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons, and thanks for watching.